Good morning, children. I hope you all are in the pink of health. Welcome to the new academic year 2020-21. Let me introduce myself to all of you. My name is Mrs. Apurva Saroke and I'll be teaching you all English, History and Geography. Let us begin with the first session of English. Chapter 1 Life We will be discussing the warming up activities of this poem first. Let us see activity 1. Children, you all have come across many popular lines like Life is a game, play it well, life is a journey, keep going ahead. Similarly, you have to make a few more such metaphorical lines about life. Last year, you all have studied about the figure of speech metaphor. Metaphor is an indirect comparison between two objects, things or abstract ideas. Let us see the example of the first sentence. Here, it has been said that Life is a game. That means life has been indirectly compared to game. Similarly, you all have to make five more such metaphorical lines about life. Let us see activity 2. Prepare as many acrostics using the word life. It means you have to make meaningful sentences or words using the letters in the word life. Let us see activity 3. Children, below the blue block you can see some words which express either positive feelings or negative feelings. You all have to put them in the appropriate columns. The words that express positive feelings have to be put down in the column positive feelings. The words that express <laughs> negative feelings have to be put down in the column negative feelings. Okay, let us start with the poem then. The title of the poem is Life. It has been written by Charlotte Bronte who was born on 21st April 1816. This is a three stanza poem with an alternating line rhyme scheme throughout the poem except for the first and the third line in which the words dream and rain do not rhyme. Let us read the first stanza. Life, believe, is not a dream so dark as sages say. Oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom. But these are transient all. If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh, why lament its fall? Let me explain the meaning of the first stanza. Bronte starts by saying that life is not some kind of a dark dream as said by wise people. In fact, unpleasant things such as dark clouds are temporary and the rains will make the roses bloom. So, why should one be upset over the rain when such loveliness comes after it? There is no reason to be sad over the unhappy elements of life as they will pass and bring with them something positive. There is a proverb Every cloud has a silver lining which suggests that unhappy and 
sad times do pass by and are certainly followed by positivity. So, one should always be optimistic and positive. Let us see the difficult words in this stanza. The word sage means a wise person. The word oft means the literary form of the word often. The word foretells means predict. The word gloom means sadness or darkness. The word transient means temporary. The word lament means express grief or regret. Let us see the second stanza. Rapidly merry re, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. Let us see the meaning of these lines. The second stanza is simpler and shorter in which the speaker suggests to merrily and cheerily celebrate the happy hours as they are short-lived. The speaker wants to promote a way of living in which one appreciates and enjoys each hour that passes. Here, with sunny hours, the poetess wants to suggest the happy moments of our life. The poetess advises us to enjoy the happy moments as they are short-lived. Let us see the difficult words in this stanza. The word flit means to fly quickly. The word gratefully means thankfully. Let us see the third stanza. What though death at time steps in and calls our best away? What though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway? Yet hope again elastic springs, unconquered though she fell. Still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear us well. So, in this stanza, the poetess wants to minimize the power of death. The first two complete sentences of this stanza are questions in which the speaker is basically asking, So what? So what if death at times steps in? So what if sorrow seems to win? These things do exist. But they are temporary. The fifth line of the stanza is more hopeful. Here, the poetess describes hope as having elastic springs. Even though she falls in sorrow, she bounces back. Her golden wings are still strong and buoyant to bear us well. It means that sometimes in life we may lose our loved ones and so feel helpless and sad. But it is hope that helps us to keep going. Because if there is hope, a hope to be happy, a hope to be successful, a hope to be satisfied, we get the zeal the enthusiasm to live. Let us see the difficult words of this stanza. The word sway means controlling influence. The word unconquered means not overcome or defeated. The word buoyant means which can rise upwards. Let us see the last stanza. Manfully, fearlessly, the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously, can courage 
quell despair. Here, in the last four lines of the poem, the poetess speaks of strength. The poetess wants <laughs> us to live manfully and fearlessly as a strong man would live. She concludes by saying that when one's day of trial comes, this could be one's most challenging day or the day of judgment by God. So, when one's day of trial comes, one must face it with courage because only courage can defeat sadness and helplessness. The poetess wants to suggest that during the hard and difficult times, one must be strong-headed and face the problems manfully and bravely. Let us see the difficult words of this stanza. The word manfully means bravely. The word gloriously means pleasantly. The word victoriously means having won. The word quell means end. The word despair means lack of hope. I hope you all have understood the poem. Please read the poem three times children and write down the meanings of the difficult words in your textbook itself. Thank you. Be safe.